Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today we have a bit of a problem with the shipment of certain arms, and that's going to have a major impact on the type of armament that this ship will have. This scenario was sent in by Artsigem. It is 1912. You are a dictator, I mean, elected ruler of a small island nation. Your nation is surrounded on all sides by hostile nations set out on stealing your resource rich lands. Or you're just really paranoid. With no real heavy industry of your own, you reach out to other nations to produce and deliver a warship for you. Naturally, you approach the British. After all, they are the world's leaders in sea power. You cannot afford to operate a large fleet, so you opt to buy a single battleship so formidable that it would be foolish for any of your rivals to challenge you. You commission a ship of nine 19-inch guns. Surely, that will be enough force to scare your enemies into never leaving... Uh, into uh, never leaving their ports. Now, this is 1912. I'm afraid that 19-inch guns in this day and age are just not available. A few years later, your ship arrives. It is huge and imposing. Everything you could have wished for. For legal reasons, the ship's armaments arrive separately to be installed domestically. But to your horror, there has been a mix-up. Instead of nine 19-inch guns, you have been sent 19 9-inch guns. Your neighbors have become increasingly hostile and you fear an attack might be imminent. There is no time to wait for the correct guns to arrive. I have one battleship with a bunch of 19-inch guns and that's all that I'm going to have to use to take down the enemy fleet. Now the enemy fleet is a bunch of smaller nations which have combined their forces. That's why they have managed to come up with a battleship, two cruisers, four lights and eight destroyers. So these guys all together are represented by the Spanish. Victory is achieved when you have destroyed enough of the enemy fleet that they would never again come out and engage in direct conflict with you. Yeah, well, when is that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe one island nation would decide that that's after sinking one or two ships. Maybe the other one goes, nope, we're all in. If I lose my entire fleet, that will be the end of it. So I don't exactly know when these guys are going to call it quits, but I'd say I'd have to sink at least the battleship and two heavy cruisers. That would have to be the least of the sinkings. Now normally with one battleship that would be pretty doable, but a battleship which is only armed with 9 inch guns? That's tricky. Let's see what I can design. Fortunately, we have the Dreadnought 2 hull, which is capable of getting a nice amount of displacement and a nice amount of guns on them. I'm just shy of 40,000 tons. Now, the ship is impressive and formidable and all these beautiful things, uh, but the 9-inch guns... Where am I going to put those? I'm thinking a couple on the bow and a whole bunch on the stern. Because I cannot really shift the super strong... Oh, I can't shift it a bit farther back. Hold on. You can go back there. You can sit over here. We're going to combine these. Now the game, or rather the scenario, says nothing about what I am limited to insofar as I get torpedo tubes. The game, or the scenario, says I need to have torpedo... Or I need to have 9-inch guns. Not... Um, that I cannot have torpedo tubes. So I'm going to use that caveat and probably throw on a couple of 9-inch guns. Which I believe are the smallest guns that I can get. The 9-inch Mark III in a dual barrel configuration. Uh, what? Wait. Wow, okay. Uh, this tall barbette for secondaries is capable of housing a 9-inch gun. Really? I didn't know you could put a primary on a secondary barbette. That's nice. Hold on. If that's the case, then I wonder how weird I can make this. Give me the barbette. No, I'm afraid I cannot put another barbette in there. This is probably too tall. I think a standard barbette might actually do. Just a standard barbette for secondaries. This is also to make sure that I don't have that much of a roll. And then uh, a standard superimposed... Jesus, that thing is enormous. Superimposed barbette. Hold on a moment. Do you mean that I can also put 9-inch guns on here? No. 
I can put them on there, but not on these small secondary barbettes. All right, fair enough. In that case, let's go with a lighter barbette, the medium superimposed barbette. And then I can put another gun over there and another one over here. This thing is ridiculously tall. So it's probably going to make my pitch not... or actually, No, it's not the pitch, it's the roll. The roll factor is going to be pretty bad because I have my guns pretty high up. Can I do the same thing on the stern? Uh, yes. Probably after putting... Oh, shit, I removed it. Uh, probably after putting up the standard barbette first. Otherwise, the game doesn't know that I can put a secondary barbette there. So you're going to sit there. <laughs> yep. We can do this. <laughs> oh, this game. This game. Now, there is one tiny problem, and that is that 9-inch guns don't have a lot of penetration. If the enemy has a respectable belt armor of, let's say, about, what, 10 inches? I would have to close to within 2,500 meters to actually be able to penetrate that armor. So I'm going to have to put quite a bit of work in to ensure that I can actually do damage to that ship. Lidite 1, generally not known for getting a high shell pen. But I think 2 powder is my best bet at another 10.5%. The other ones are just flat out shell damage. White powder gives you a bit of pen, but not enough. 2 powder it is. Now I could put a couple of side mounted guns on. And that would allow me even more firepower. Um, I could get a total of... What? 12... This is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 9-inch guns. That's pretty substantial. For a 1912 battleship. That is pretty substantial indeed. Now let's go ahead and put on some of the systems that I need in order to just get the ship going out of the dock in the first place. Before I decide to add a bunch more weapon systems. 94.2, yeah, I'll accept that. Okay, uh, barbette armor is nice. You don't want flash fires. Anti-torpedo belt, yes. Double hull bottom. Uh, let's go for anti-flood 2 this time. And citadel. Uh, yeah, citadel. Armor citadel. Or citadel 3. Reinforced bulkheads 1. The other one's not available yet. That still gives me 7,000 tons. That's a lot. That's a hell of a lot. Hold on. If you guys could move for a second, I can put these things here. Sight mount 9 inch. Pitch and roll on this ship is going to be pretty dreadful. Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay. I still need something to keep destroyers and such at bay. And I'm thinking 5 and 6 inch guns, while not terribly good in this era, are, well, hopefully sufficient. We're going to put a couple of 5s on there. And then, let's see. I don't really want to put any secondaries here for risk that they impede the firing process of this 9 inch. But maybe some smaller guns? No, this thing doesn't really have any slots for them. See, I could put the gun here. But this one would sort of get impeded by that, unless I squeeze it right next to the barbette here. Now it can fire, and this one's not terribly impacted. Nah, that's alright. So you can sit over there. Now, can I do the same thing on the other side? Somewhat. These are only 3-inch guns. Uh, I think I'm going to have to pack a bit more armor, or a bit more ammo than what I'm currently carrying. Considering the amount of firepower that I'm going to be able to burn to bear, I'll... Well, I might run out of ammo. Rather quickly. Which is problematic. Now, at this point, I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 guns as a broadside. Provided I can bring them all to bear on the enemy. If I'm able to do that, I can unleash a hell of a barrage. I'm going to shift the whole thing forward a bit. 
because I don't quite like the roll. Uh, sorry, this is a medium barbette. You can sit over there. Need to remove the threes, move this setup, 2%, 0.5. I'm now pretty close to the center line of the ship, I feel. I could put this one slightly farther back. Pull this one in. It's going to remove the or move the weight offset a bit. Two percent. The problem is that all of these wing turrets are going to impact the roll factor. Quite a lot, I'm afraid. So be it. Squeeze these things back between the... Oh, crap. That doesn't fit anymore. Unless I rotate them. Then they can still fit. Does that work the same thing here? No, here they just... They just fit. Oh. <laughs> I have maxed out the amount of guns that I can carry. So, as much as I would like, I cannot bring any more firepower on this ship. Now, considering that I'm going to have to get really close to the enemy, torpedo launchers are nice. They will help me. Bow, stern. Uh, let's go for, well, 19 inches, the best I can get. And it is going to be short range, so fast torpedoes. A couple of systems to aid would be hydro and, well, this would allow me to locate them. But we're starting at 15,000 meter range, so I'd probably be able to see them pretty quickly. Turning circle. Scroll all the way up. 999 meters. That is pretty high for a turning circle. 800 meters, that's better. And now I can actually pretty liberally spend a bunch of armor. Let's go with a 14 inch armor belt, plus an almost 100% armor quality buff. That should put a lot of armor on this ship. If the enemy brings 14-inch guns, they will be able to pen me at a range of 2,500 meters. That is going to keep this ship safe for quite a while. I'm not going to invest that much into deck armor because I don't believe I'll be spending that much time at that range. I don't expect plunging fire. It doesn't mean I won't get it. But I just don't really want <clears throat> to spend that much time there. Let's go with about 8 inch for the secondaries. A bit more on the turret top. Conning tower to 16. And I'm thinking of getting a bit more speed on this ship. Because then I can close the distance faster. And especially with those 9 inch pea shooters that I'll have, I need that. 29 knots in 1912. That is a really, really fast ship. Turning circle is going to go back up to 911 at full speed. So once I get closer, I'll have to slow down or risk running into torpedoes, which I just cannot dodge. 15 inch armor belt. Good Lord. Six and a half. Can we get seven? Yes. Oh, look at that. Just one ton shy of maximum displacement. One ton. After offset, 0.6. All right, this is the Neptune. Uh, which is, of course, not what the... Uh, well, let's say the leader of our faction would call it. No, this is going to be the glorious leader. The, uh, <laughs> maybe. Admiral General Aladdin. <laughs> there. Or what was his official title again? For those of you who haven't seen it, um, this is of course a reference to the dictator. And if you are in the mood for a really wacky movie, I would recommend. All right, so what did my other enemy factions bring? They brought a battleship with a few guns. A couple of casemates, and it doesn't look too intimidating, but those guns probably do more damage to me than I do to them. 
simply because they have a larger caliber. Now, let's see if the Admiral General Aladdin can make its way towards the enemy, because I can only open up at 13.7 meter range. Uh, well, kilometer range. Oh, hello. What are you then? You are, I think, a light cruiser. I'm seeing some casemates. I'm seeing a small gun on the bow and a small gun on the stern. Four funnels, no less. So wherever that lightly armored thing is, or lightly armed thing is going, it's not going there in a uh, in a turtley way. It's going to go there pretty quickly with all those funnels. <laughs> the glorious leader. <laughs> oh man. Three percent chance to hit. I'm actually impressed. This ship can do pretty well. I have two thousand rounds or two thousand shells of ammunition. That's for the nine inch wing turrets, and then I have the nine inch centerline turrets. That should be plenty to take down a couple of these ships. Now, as I dictated, um, the rules is I need to sink the battleship and I need to sink two heavy cruisers. Speaking of, no, you're not a heavy cruiser. You're a torpedo boat, sorry, destroyer. Uh, six torpedo tubes, a bunch of secondary gun, or, well, not secondary guns, a bunch of smaller guns. We're going to turn starboard. Get all those guns firing. The five inch guns are also starting to whack the destroyer over the head. Although I don't have too many which can actually fire in that direction. Fortunately, it seems like this one on the, the secondary tall barbette is capable of rotating a full 180 degrees along the length of the ship. So maybe I'm able to take this DD out pretty quick. And if not, I still have some three inch guns. And I am not. Hmm. Let's simply say I'm not opposed to firing 9-inch guns at a destroyer. Because this thing has the potential to cause a lot of damage to me. Hello, what are you? You're a, little, you're a heavy cruiser. Four guns only. A couple of secondaries. And potentially some hidden torpedo tubes. I wonder if they can even do damage. Now this battleship is packing 11-inch guns. Fire all guns at the destroyer. Look at that. 2.9% chance to hit a destroyer inside of a smokescreen. I like it. Torpedo range is only 4-4. So torpedo-wise, I don't have to expect anything to just reach the target at all, let alone hit it. I'm continuing, continuing to zigzag here. Because I am fearing some torpedoes in the water. That's another destroyer. See, this guy has his torpedo tubes turned pretty angrily in my direction. Let's slow the ship down. Insofar as that's going to be happening before... Oh, never mind. Before the DD gets into range. Off with its head. Oh, nice one. First shot, and we get a fire and a flooding. Uh-oh, torps in the water. Turning circle is looking nicely, and by turning, I'm also ditching a bitch. A bitch? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> ditching a bit more speed. That's another ship. That was the destroyer. Flooded that one out. We have the Alessandro Puero. Puerio? How are you supposed to pronounce that? That one just sent torpedoes my way. Admiral, hard to port. Now, a couple of 9-inch guns should make short work of this ship. Unfortunately, I'm a bit late with delivering said armament. Because the damage that this ship can do is potentially already done. 19-inch torpedoes cruising towards the battleship. The heavy cruiser has been identified. The Rhine Victoria Eugenia. 10-inch guns. A couple of 4-inch secondaries. 3-inch and 2-inch casemates. And, indeed, torpedo launchers. 
My torp launchers are almost in range. Do you have anything to detect? You do. Hydro 1. Turning circle, 379. Yeah, I won't hit that. Hard to starboard. Let's continue to evade those torpedoes by zigzagging. New target. Ah, this one also fired. The Villamil. Okay, okay. Look at that, 8%? What the hell? That is impressive. <laughs> ah, there they are. Turn. Few bulkheads. Now, I don't have maxed bulkheads, my, bu maxed bulkheads myself. So, if I get hit, I'm probably going to take a lot of damage from flooding. But not as much as this guy. That one went down really quickly. Still, I haven't really made a dent in this fleet. At least not to my mission objectives. But I'm just trying to eliminate the ships which I think will pose the greatest risk. And that's the destroyers and potentially the light cruisers. How many torpedoes do you carry? Yeah, see? They look harmless. They don't travel as quickly as I thought they would with four funnels. But they have three torpedo tubes per side. So, um, don't get too close to the lights. Or they will recommend that you change course. So far, I'm really, <laughs> really enjoying this ship. I've already done 2900 damage. But then again, I detonated one of their ships. So that's not really fair. Now, once the destroyers are dead and the light cruisers are at a decent distance, I can probably go broadside and start wiping out heavy cruisers. Maybe the battleship in a bit, but with a 17% chance to pen, it's really not worth my time. We're still not quite dialed in on the Alessandro. And again, she is leaving. Ah, there we go. Fire and flooding. That should slow her down. Vulnerable. And finishing off. That looks like another 5 inch and 3 inch hits. There we go. Now, do you carry torps? You do. Oh, but only bow and stern. You're fine. You're fine. Steady as she goes. Because this cruiser probably doesn't stand a snowball's chance in hell to pen this ship. No. 12%. Fine, we'll reconnect with that ship later. Target the Reina Victoria Eugenia. Can we pen that, actually? <laughs> yeah, we can. Reasonable chance. There we go. Are you survivable? Yeah, pretty. Pretty survivable. That ship is just getting bombarded with 9-inch <laughs> shells. Which sure a heavy cruiser is exactly what you would want for the armament on the on your battleship. It's the perfect gun to take out a, li a heavy cruiser. Well, and a light cruiser too. But against a battleship, oof. The Contento is going to be a pretty big issue to sink with my main guns. Standard bulkheads. I'll probably have to use torpedoes to get that one down. Because even at short range? How much armor you got? 11.6 inches of belt armor. Oh, damn. Um, I don't... <laughs> I don't think I can pen that at all. <laughs> oh, shit. Hold on a moment. That's exceptionally rude. Can I outturn that? Well, I hope so. Irina Victoria Eugenia is starting to get some serious water on the ship. Uh-oh. Well, I might be just able to dodge that. Yeah. Come on, get rid of it before she also fires her stern tube. Chance to pen? About 30%. Come on, get rid of the heavy. And then we still need to fix a couple of torpedo problems before we manage to close in on the battleship. 
The problem is that my ricochet chance is too high, so let's switch to high explosive. And see if we can just put that ship down. Before we have to focus on the DDs again. Torpedoes are ready, but not launched. Not launched. Not launched. Not launched. Okay, the DDs are currently not a threat. Or, well, they're a threat. They just haven't materialized that much yet. But they're in range, right? Yeah, they're definitely in range. 6.7. I'm six clicks out. The oh, see? The stern tube. That's exactly what I was talking about. Can that battleship do some damage? Not likely. 20% chance to pen. Versus my... How much is that? 18? Okay. Maybe against the... The bow? Bow belt? The belt extended, that is? Because that's something I can pen. The turrets, I don't even have to consider trying to do damage to those. Because that is simply impervious. 13.3 inch. What heavy cruiser is going to survive? Um, switch fire. We'll get back to that heavy cruiser in a bit. I first want to silence the larger guns which are shooting at me. And that means that the destroyers have to go so I can get to the battleship. Let's increase speed again. Ship did slow down a fair bit. And that allowed me to start evading those torpedoes. Come on. One or two good 19 inch or 9 inch hits, and the Alessandro will cease to exist. Now, this ship is tanking a lot of damage. But she is definitely getting damaged. She's down to 84%. Oh, we hit the other ship. Yep, that's what you get. Too close, and you're going to be dead. So both of these DDs are at risk of getting killed off. The Almirante Ferrandis. And the Alessandro. We're still parallel to these ships, allowing all the guns to fire. At least the ones on the port side. Flooding. 3%. Gone. Next up, since she's already weakened, the Fernandes. Oh, sorry, Ferrandis. 83% structural remaining. Anybody else trying to have a go? <laughs> the San Juan only has 53 shells left. Reduced ammo shells. Oh, you deserve what you get then. Come on. Nice. That flooding could kill her. Yep. Job well done. Range the DDs is still 6. I'm keeping them more or less at that 6 kilometer range. So that they don't get any funny ideas about launching torps. And if they do, and I spot that they just launched their torps, I can still turn. Auto selector. We've selected the heavy cruiser as our main target. The angle is not great. Ricochet is 45 degrees or 46. Still, a couple of the guns might be able to inflict some damage here. There we go. Flooding. These things were survivable with flooding. Standard bulkheads. Yeah, not that much, though. I was angling against the battleship. By doing so, I'm closing in the DDs a bit more than I would like. So steady as she goes. Torpedo the Sun 1. Since we have these torpedoes, I might as well use them. Flooding. Engine damaged. Especially that rudder damage could come in very handy. Because that makes the ship less likely to evade the torpedoes. That could work. DD status? No launch. No launch. No launch. Torpedoes both hit the target. San Juan is now seriously in trouble. And gone. Alright. Who would like to go next? We've selected the closest DD, the uh, Roger de Lauria. The battleship is still trying to chip away at my structural integrity and succeeding. We're down to 
What's your speed? Maximum 27 and a half. That's substantial for a ship. I can do almost that at full speed. Not flank. I'm trying to not go to flank to get a bit more accuracy. The light cruisers and the heavies, they can just keep their distance. They have a reduced ammo for shells as well. And that means that they only carry 90 shells. Or at least some of them only have 90 shells or fewer remaining to do damage against the Admiral General Aladdin. Now the ship has torpedoed. That's what I wanted to see. When did you torpedo? Just now. Flooding. Very good. And there are the torps. Zigzag your way through towards the destroyers. Guadalquivir will not launch because the other DD's in the in the way. But that probably won't survive for very long. So I have to keep an eye on this DD and the one here. Meanwhile, close in. I'm going to hit them with my sword because my shells cannot pen this ship. Some damage to the main guns. Fortunately, no... Flash fire. Oh, that was a flash fire. No flash fires on my ship as of yet. But I'm actually surprised that they can do damage to my guns. That's another flash fire. That's a really quick way to get rid of two DDs. Increase the flank speed. I'm surprised they can do damage to my turrets because those are very heavily armored. They have 16 inches of armor. Plus about 100%. These things... Normally they would be able to pen the belt slash deck, but I'm looking at the belt of uh, that much armor. Not at all. But they're slowly chipping away. I have to keep a bit of an eye on the torpedoes from the Contento. Only port and starboard, not even that many. Alright, increase the flank if you still can. Maybe damage instability is preventing that. Put the secondaries on the Vigilante. Because that light cruiser could still pose a threat if it decides to torpedo me with the bow or launcher. Bow tube. In the meanwhile, continuing to pressure the Guadalquivir, which just sent out her torps. Starboard turn. Evade the torps and allow me to get closer to the battleship. The Contento. Ammunition? Plenty. For once, I don't have to worry too much about that. There are the torps. Steady as she goes, we'll be fine. Range, 4-3. Turning circle on the battleship is 700 meters. Which is substantial. Does she have hydrophones? She does. Okay, so she's capable of seeing those torps come in from a bit of a distance away. So let's go closer. I'm doing 26 knots. The ship is unharmed, so I'm assuming 27 and a half. But I am sort of closing on the ship. Now if I launch a torpedo at this distance. If the ship even wants to do that. Oh, speaking of. That's uh, one of the torpedoes from the Contento. Come on, Guadalquivir. You're up. Come on. No, don't pump out the water. Only dreams now. There we go. Contento. Range 3-3. If I fire a torpedo, I might be able to force the ship to turn away from me, which is not what I want. Chance to pen is dreadful. 27%. Oh, what? Flooding? Yeah, we hit him in the stern. And that caused the flooding, which will also cause the slowdown of the Contento. She's flooding still. 85, 84, 83, 82, 81, 80. Okay. That's really good. Allows me to get closer. Makes the ship more sluggish as well, the Contento. 70%. More damage to my main turrets. I wouldn't be surprised if at some point I have one of my turrets just fly off the ship. Oof. Destroyed a secondary gun. 
damage control, damage main tower, and uh, fire control. But more importantly, she's starting to run a little low on shells. She has 182 versus my almost 2400. Come at me, bro. Rather, I am going to close in and just send a few of the torpedoes your way. It's almost like the Contento heard that and decided to start turning. The flooding has been cancelled out and her buoyancy is back up to 98%. Destroy the casemate. Okay. So I've destroyed a secondary gun somewhere. Yeah, this one. That's one of her fives. Fortunately, she doesn't carry too many. Although, well, I'm a battleship. I'm not sure what a five-inch gun would do to this ship. The Contento is still pretty bladed, so I'm not eager to launch a Torp yet, because it will force her to turn. Hold on. Ah, oh, crap. Still got a D or a light cruiser on me. Range 1-1. One, one. Send it. Bow tube away. The Contento detects it. But might not be able to turn. Nope. She undertook no action to try and evade that. But the uh, Admiral General Aladdin is now also flooding. Contento. Down to 80% buoyancy. 75 Let's see if we can get a few more of those torpedoes away. 70%? Oh, no, 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 no. She's heavily bladed. Very difficult to land torps now. My buoyancy is still perfect. The flooding didn't do much, but... <laughs> Good lord, look at that. Rudder damaged on the Aladdin. My turning circle is now very poor. Alright, screw it. In case I cannot get the ship any... In a, in a better position, I'm going to launch the torps anyway. Her buoyancy is coming back up. Is this light cruiser going to be a problem? Vigilante? She might. Target the Vigilante. Rudder has been repaired. Very good. Now to slow down and close the distance again on the Contanto. Contento. Oh! Hold on a moment. Got a torpedo to evade. Contento has a damaged engine. That might come into my advantage. Torpedoes away towards the Vigilante. Uh-oh. Nope. Whoa. That was close. I don't expect the Vigilante to take a torpedo, though. But she's dropping them. Come on. Very high chance to pen. Let's fire high explosive. Because these things are usually not armored. Or not enough. Three, cha uh, three inches of belt armor. That's the torpedoes from the light cruiser. She carries a lot of those. 29? Increased. Right. My ship's down to 58%. There we go. Fire and flooding. Structural. Maximum bulkheads? Whoa. Whoa. That's impressive for a light cruiser. I'm just not sure if it's going to save her. Because she is starting to flood pretty bad. I'm also flooding, but I have every faith in my crew members to try and fix that. Damage control party is probably pretty motivated. Now the ship is now a bit angled, the light cruiser, so I'm switching back to armored piercing. Because now I think I have enough ship to actually arm those fuses on. As opposed to how the ship was angled, which would probably just cause overpens on the ship. I have to keep an eye on the Santa Teresa. Because she might have some ill intent. 49% structural. Could you please cease fire? Because it's getting problematic. She's down to 28 shells. I can probably just outlast these things. 
But the problem is the torpedoes from the Vigilante. And I'm now very, very close. And she's reloaded. Here, overpen. High explosive again. Blow that thing away. Do so now. Vigilante flooding. More flooding. Put her under before she puts us under. Torpedoes on the Contento when ready. More flooding. I'm down to 45%. Oh shit, I cannot evade that. Contento just sent a torp my way. Caliber? 19 inch. Vigilante sinks, but not before sending a torpedo my way. I'm not concerned about flooding, I'm concerned about my structural integrity. Torpedo on the stern, out towards the light cruiser. Torpedo starboard, out towards the contento. Torpedo evaded. Santa Teresa, turning. 35% structural integrity. Torpedoes look like they might hit the contento. One hit, two hits. So far, I have sunk quite a few of their ships. They still have the heavy cruiser, although it's refusing to fire, and the Contento just ran out of main gun ammunition. Despite carrying a standard complement, she tried her level best to do damage against the General, the Admiral General Aladdin, and failed. Or at least, she's not capable of doing any more without using her torpedoes. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I still have all my guns available. Don't use any torps anymore because I might need to use those to sink the Contento. Torpedo in the water. Damn light cruiser. And there's a few more coming. Come on. 28% chance to hit. High explosive. There we go. Fire and flooding. I'm not sure if this is the right, damn it, if this is the right choice to use high explosive or AP. You could make a case for both. My reasoning is that I'll probably dodge or I'll probably um, bounce off of the light cruiser with armor piercing. But then again, she's not really heavily armored. So maybe I can just completely overpen that armor. In the sense, not that I fly out one side, or fly in one side, fly out the other, but that I'm capable of doing damage to the ship. Jesus, my accuracy is all over the place now. Buoyancy 66%, structural 32. Torpedo the Contento when you can. Also, we still need to sink the Reina Victoria Eugenia. Good hits. Speed limited to 14.3. Torpedo in the water. I will not be able to dodge that. Yeah, armor piercing is not the right choice. Switch to high explosive. Oh, uh, I don't want to lose this fight. But at this rate, they're just wearing me down with structural integrity. That was 10% of my structural. That's a lot. Torpedo incoming from the Contento. She only has one left. Turn. Hit on the stern. I'm down to 11%. Get rid of that bloody battleship. Torpor again. Starboard launchers. Also, this light cruiser really needs to give up the ghost right about now. Torpedoes away. Starboard side. Target. Eugenia. Oh, sorry. Contento. Look at how they massacred my boy. Another torpedo in the water. This time around with three damaged engines and no rudder. I don't really have it. In sorry, it's, it's three. I really don't have any hopes of surviving this one. Oh, man. I should have butchered those light cruisers when I had the chance. This is what I get for not doing that. Two will hit. Structure down to 7%. Buoyancy to 
The, almost the entirety of this ship is now flooded. Yeah, she'll die. She'll sink to that. Ah. And there she goes. Too close, too dangerous, and too dead at this point. Battle lost. Still, I had a lot of fun with the scenario. Um, especially the 19 uh, and 9 inch gun mix up. <laughs> I found that very amusing. If you guys have any other scenarios that can make me laugh, send them in. Link down below in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what your thoughts are, and I'll see you soon for another one.